on this episode of TFL Pro, it's old versus old. Yeah, actually, Andre, it's old versus older. As always, I brought our project truck 2008 Land Cruiser that we modified for off-roading, the TFL Pro. Yeah, and I brought the 2004 Land Rover Discovery Rescue Rig. Hang on, shouldn't, shouldn't the Toyota be the rescue rig and the Land Rover be the project? Anyways, what are we doing today? Well, we're going up Rocky Top to figure out the best parts and the worst parts of each. That's right, we're going off-road. And anytime you're off-roading in an old Rover, it's gonna be a good video. Did you bring your uh, tow strap? And I know what you might be saying, these two don't compete against each other, but they are remarkably similar. These two have a lot of similar traits, even though they go about them a little bit differently. Let's review, what are the obstacles here on Rocky Top? Yep, so Rocky Top is one of our off-road torture tests. The first test is a traction test, so steep and loose. Second test is all about how the vehicle can manage What's this? Articulation. How it can manage the bongos. Yes. And then the third test is all about ground clearance. So we've got some big rocks. We're gonna see if we're able to go over them without hitting. So let's see which one does better to the top. You go first because I'm gonna sweep up and drag you off the mountain. Sweep up. <laughs> all right, Rocky Top in the Land Rover. Into neutral, into low range old school lever and I'm gonna do my center diff lock as well oh yes low range engage so up the hill we go now this first stage is loose and steep so let's see how it tackles this first bit of rockiness and up on the rock it goes oh yeah no problem these dura tracks gripped with ease and set me up. I'm gonna put the Land Cruiser in its most off-road worthy mode. First neutral, then four low, center diff locked. And later on in the trail, I'll test the crawl control system. And of course, off-roading is not truly about lots of horsepower. It's about your crawling ability. And this truck has that. Uh, 381 horses and 401 pound feet of torque are pulsing through a six speed automatic. And I'm just crawling at below 1000 RPM. Tommy, take that. This is just a crawling speed afternoon drive. If you have been watching this series, you know the mods we've done. It's not just about the white wrap, but it's also about a two inch suspension lift with Old Man Emu suspension, BFG KO2 tires, rock sliders, and on top, of course, the powerful air intake snorkel. I'm not worried about this run at all because Land Cruiser is synonymous with off-roading and also synonymous with reliability and durability. Our Land Rover Discovery 2 here is the epitome of class and also off-road aggression because we've got our ARB front bumper, a worn winch, we've got about a three inch terra firma lift, we've got these big oversized dirt track Wrangler tires. Of course, you gotta have the roof rack because it's a Land Rover, some lights, a metal rear bumper. This thing is all kitted out for off-road fun. The question is, how's it gonna do up the mountain? Tommy, I think you have an issue here in the fog light. Yeah. Uh, as our videographer says, it looks like one of those orbs that you like put an ecosystem in. I mean, it's gonna be cool to see if we can grow like some kind of prehistoric reptile in there. Um, wow. These old Land Rovers are a lot like those little potted cacti or is it cactuses that you buy at like a hardware store. I mean, you have to maintain them. You have to water them, you have to give them sun if they're gonna live. And with Land Rovers, you have to give them oil and you have to give them like head gaskets. But once you do that, they're actually extremely robust. They last a long time if you keep up with the maintenance. And that's because they've got a great set of bones, a super strong, solid, 
frame, and then you also have rigid axles front and back. I mean, they really do perform exceptionally well off-road. Now we're coming up to a very articulated section, which is going to be great with solid axles, and it's also going to be great because of the traction control system that Land Rover implemented. And it should, in theory, send power where it needs to go. So there's the slipping, come on, grip, grip, and there's the lift, and come on, stay on it, stay on it, stay on it, stay on it, and there we go! So it will do it, you just have to commit, but it's so strong, I mean, the bones of this vehicle. Okay. I need to close. Alright, so I was using very low speed, because I was very confident, but now... Let me use the computer and use call control. Yeah, let's see what this Land Cruiser can do. You're gonna be maxed out on flex, I can tell you that much. Here it is, crawl control is active. This was one of their early systems. And I am maxed out on, on <laughs> flex. But the computer and the traction control and the entire vehicle are helping me negotiate this. And if the Land Cruiser has a weak spot, it's, it's actually, it's humongous size. This is a very big truck and sometimes you have to be mindful of that. Okay, you ready Andre? Yeah. Um, overall interior looks nice, but this is now completely removable. Okay. So hold on to that. Uh, also this, look at that! What the heck happened there? So the whole like dashboard binnacle no longer really fits. This doesn't really stay closed. It likes to open up uh, willy-nilly. Also, the boot around the shifter has disintegrated completely, so there are some bits and bobs in here that are less than perfect. But have you overheated yet? Um, let, let's, <laughs> let's, let's go see what the Land Cruiser is, is broken with. Dude, step into a lap of luxury. There's nothing broken, nothing even worn down after 150,000 miles of use. It's amazing. Yeah, that's true. Mine has only gone 148,000, but it is four years older. But I mean, it's amazing. Like, nothing squeaks, nothing rattles. Everything is tight as a drum in here. Beautiful. Now, Tommy, remember, as fast as possible, you want to fly through this section at about 40 miles an hour. How dare you use the Land Rover motto against me? Okay, ground clearance, come on, come on, buddy. Oh, oh. In the strokes. Oh. Damn, that's a big rock, dude. That's a big rock. That's how it's done right there. We improved the clearance on the Land Cruiser by about two inches. Also, we removed the stock side steps and replaced them with Metal Tech rock sliders. And that's really important for protection because right about now, I really need those rock sliders. I'm gonna try to use the same line Tommy took. And by the way, Metal Tech makes components for other Toyota trucks like the Forerunner. Ooh, I think I touched my rock slider. Oh, but it's so beautifully done. Good job, Land Cruiser. Just a tiny little tink on the rock slider. That was great, right? No touching whatsoever? No, you did a tink, as you say. A little, a little touch there. Yeah, but I don't have a four inch lift like your truck. That's not four, it's like three inches. But luckily we had these sturdy rock sliders on here, so yeah. we didn't actually take out the rocker. This would be expensive. Yeah, super expensive. So dude, is it better to rove or to cruise? Well, you, 
Well, you know, Andre, just as a weekend warrior to come out here and have some fun, I would take the Land Rover all day long. I just love the solid axles. But let's be real, if you're daily driving it or going across continents, you gotta take the Land Cruiser. And I think that's where the price comes in, right? We purchased the Land Rover for what, five grand? Yeah, 5,500, and the Cruiser cost us 25 grand. Yes. Obviously different era of vehicle, but still, you get what you pay for, I think, in terms of longevity. However, I still love that Land Rover so much, and nothing we did today really challenged either of them that much. No, not really, and I'm surprised Land Rover is still running a year and a half after we've been off-roading it every month. Yeah, yeah. Go back to tfltruck.com for more news, views, and real-world off-road reviews like this. Yep, let's head on back down.